It's time to get your news on. We are VK1 WIA. Once again, the man's right. It is the national news from the WIA. And it is for week commencing April 14, 2024. This week, Director Stephen, VK2 TSG, WIA AR Magazine Editor-in-Chief Roger, VK2 ZRH. King gets an upgrade. Macaroni's birthday celebrations gather momentum. And in the final final this week, news on the ILLW. And, well, if news were socks, we'd have more than enough to outfit a centipede. So wait. There's much, much more in this edition of news from the Wireless Institute of Australia. I'm Editor Graham, VK4BB. Ham Radio News. Nobody does it better. We are VK1 WIA. Hello, this is Stephen Green, VK2 TSG, one of your national WIA directors, with the board comment for this week. I'm looking forward to seeing many of you in Bundaberg for the upcoming AGM at the start of next month, where I'll be a speaker. If you haven't registered yet, please take a look at the WIA or Bundaberg Club websites for event links as soon as possible to avoid disappointment. My fellow board members and I were looking over recent nominations for WIA awards and were pleased that many of you have nominated fellow amateurs. Please think now about those who you might like to nominate for next year or even with your local council or other organisations. This not only recognises the individual, but also brings attention to amateur radio and promotes our pastime with locals. Many of our WIA-affiliated amateur radio clubs and societies are often called upon to assist the families of recently deceased members, advising and often assisting with their amateur radio, electronics and related items. My own club has assisted with the sorting, removal and sale of equipment, passing on the proceeds to family, whom often donate a small percentage to the group for their time and labour. This leads me to the thought of what arrangements would I like to occur if I was to be incapacitated or pass. Would I like to gift any particular books, equipment, files or computers to individuals? What might my club find useful? And what should be sold, donated or recycled? Many clubs and societies, or the WIA for that matter, accept donations from the estates of past members and this can be considered too. While this news item is not here to elicit donations, Some people do like to contribute to these or charitable groups. Perhaps this is a good time to discuss with your loved ones what you would like to occur, explain how to power down or disconnect your equipment, provide contact information of a trusted friend or local affiliated club who could help. A list of items or preferences in an easy-to-reach location might also be of use. Sometimes there might be a family member or close friend who would like to take up amateur radio to continue their loved one's legacy. They might benefit from friendly advice, a book or selected equipment from the estate, which is not only a good way to get started, but also is an important part of grieving and remembering. But more next time from Stephen, VK2 TSG. This is Editor-in-Chief of Amateur Radio Magazine, Roger Harrison, VK2 ZRH. Listen closely, folks. I have a little secret. A little bird has told me that issue two is in circulation. If it hasn't yet landed in your letterbox or P.O. box or local news agent, then it will appear real soon now. The theme for this issue is one we've never done before, station innovation. Now, rhyming words like that are all very well, but what do they mean? Well, something old, station, and something new, innovation. Three innovative projects to consider for your station. First up is a project from... Luda Stefano, VK3AQZ, root control by voice and gesture. Yep, Lou shows you how you can control a rig by speaking given words and all by waving your arm. What's more, he does it using low-cost, off-the-shelf, pre-built modules. At the other end of your station, there are always antennas. Dot Westcombe Down, VK5BUG, describes a pair of co-sighted vertical antennas for QRP operation on the 17 metre and 12 metre bands that easily fit within a suburban backyard. The principles, of course, can apply to verticals for other bands. Then we have an article by Paul McMahon, VK3DIP, describing a GPS-controlled frequency reference for use in your shack or in the field. When operating with certain digital modes these days, you need to know that your transceiver is on frequency. Exactly on frequency. 
Known as a GPSDO, GPS Disciplined Oscillator, such devices have been around for a while now, but Paul takes a new approach. Not only that, we have much, much, much more in issue two of our radio magazine. More guts, less gab. This has been Editor-in-Chief Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH, for VK1WIA News. A look at Australiana and Telstra and Ericsson have completed a major upgrade to King Island's mobile network infrastructure, announcing a close to tenfold capacity boost for the island's community thanks to an overwater microwave telecommunications link with a throughput capacity of 9.8 gigabits per second with 99.99% availability. The upgrade sees a 116-kilometre microwave link deployed across the Bass Strait from Australia's mainland to King Island's Cape Wickham, believed to be the longest over-water link of its kind in Telstra's national mobile network and the longest 10 gigabits per second microwave link in the world. Now on WIA National News, Discussion Point. Hello, I'm Richard VK2SKY in Sydney. It's that time of the year again when amateur radio operators throughout the world celebrate the ritual mangling of the name of one of radio's best-known pioneers. Yes, it's April, the month we celebrate International Marconi Day. April 27th this year is the Saturday closest to the birth date of Guglielmo Giovanni Maria Marconi in Bologna, Italy in 1874. Guglielmo is the Italian equivalent of the English name William. Had Marconi's Irish mother, Annie Jemison, just named him Liam, the world might have been spared the annual abomination of English speakers trying to pronounce his name and failing miserably. Perhaps Annie's being of the Irish whiskey distiller Jemison family might have played a role here. We'll never know for sure. To set the record straight, our Marconi has never been Googly Elmo, so please stop calling him that. The letter G in the middle of an Italian word is not pronounced as it is in English. Instead, it modifies the sound of the letter that follows it. Think of the G in the middle of the word lasagna. Recently, I consulted with fellow Manly Waringa Radio Society member Clifford VK2 CLF, who can speak with some authority on this matter, having some Italian background himself and fluency in the language. A decent approximation to the correct pronunciation is gu yel mo. It's not perfect, but it will do, especially over an HF radio link. Please try it, and in a nod to Quentin Tarantino, let's kill Bill, or at least kill Googly Elmo. For WIA National News, I'm Richard VK2SKY in Sydney. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now with international news, Jason, VK2LAW. Hello. As one cat Stevens once sang, leaping and hopping on a moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow. And that they did earlier this week, particularly in the USA. No two ways about it. It was a spectacular display and gathering. Millions gathered along the path of totality, the section where the sun is fully blocked by the moon, to witness something that happens on average once every 375 years for any place on our planet. This year, the moon shadow path began closer to home over the South Pacific Ocean and then crossed into North America, passing over Mexico, the United States and Canada. The first location in continental North America that experienced totality was Mexico's Pacific coast. The shadow exited continental North America on the Atlantic coast of Newfoundland, Canada. Ham radio was there, operators participating in scientific experiments serving local communities that were overrun with hundreds of thousands of visitors. The rain in Spain is but 18 months. After negotiations with the Spanish Telecommunications Administration by the Spanish amateur radio body URE, a resolution of the Spanish Secretary of State for Telecommunications and Digital Infrastructures has been published, authorising holders of Spanish amateur radio licences to transmit from fixed stations only in the 40.650 to 40.750 MHz band with a maximum peak envelope power of 25 watts for a period of 18 months. Going, going, gone. Effective 15th of April, Radio 4 will no longer be available on medium wave from the UK. Medium wave listeners there will need to retune their radio to alternative platforms. With these two turf sentences at the bottom of a related announcement, the BBC signalled the end of BBC Radio 4 service on medium wave. 
AM as we here in Australia know it as. The service will still be available on FM, DAB, digital TV and online. These frequencies were only being used to support its long wave service, which has been scheduled for closing this month since May last year. MW transmission of Radio 4 is ending, as there will no longer be a long wave variant of Radio 4's schedule. There's no Radio 4 service on MW. It's always been there to support long wave. There are only nine transmitters in total, providing very little coverage and effective listeners will have access to Radio 4 on FM, even if they don't have a digital radio, says the communique. Each week, VK4FUQ provides us with contest and DX news. Often the QSL route is mentioned as Mike Zero, Oscar, X-Ray, Oscar. M0OXO is the call of Charles Wilmot, a ham who certainly gives. Behind the scenes, it's worth a look at just what his, that is the Mike Zero Oscar X-Ray Oscar QSL service, cost the UK amateur financially. Overall, 28,936 items of mail were posted at a cost of just over £26,000 sterling. They post QSL direct cards, bureau parcels and magazines. With 13,751 more items posted this year with Solar Cycle 25 this last 12 months, providing much increased propagation on HF, it's quite staggering. So well done, Charles. USA Highways and Byways What is the state of broadcast radio in US vehicles today? According to Q's 2024 in Vehicle Visuals report released this past week, it's pretty much ubiquitous. But radio no longer has a monopoly on the average number of audio sources in a vehicle. The era of two knobs, six presets and a CD player is in the rearview mirror, says Fred Jacobs, who contributed analysis and commentary to the report. Among the 100 best-selling vehicles in 2023, 100% are equipped with FM, 98% have AM radio, In one of the study's big surprises, 70% of new vehicles are equipped with HD. Here would be DAB Plus Radio. Radio now shares the dashboard with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay found in 98% of vehicles. In other words, these dashboard apps are as ubiquitous as AM radio and almost as ubiquitous as FM. Still talking radio, in the US, their FCC has received fresh comments from the aviation industry regarding a proposal that would allow more US FM stations to increase HD radio digital power levels. The aviation industry says it needs further clarifications from the FCC before it can begin collaborative testing with the broadcast industry to identify any possible interference in adjacent aviation radio bands that a power increase might cause. Members of the aviation community previously submitted comments raising concerns about the potential for harmful interference to aviation VHF receivers operating in the 108 to 118 MHz aeronautical radio navigation service allocation immediately adjacent to the FM broadcast radio band at 88 to 108 MHz. For VK1 WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason VK2LAW. We are VK1WIA. Now, operational news with VK4FUQ. Felix. Hello there. Now, contest wise 2024. Don Edwards Memorial Slow Moors Contest. The St George Amateur Radio Society will again be holding the Don Edwards Memorial Slow Moors in 2024. The contest is held on the weekend after Mother's Day. This year, it will be Saturday the 18th and Sunday 19th of May. The contest is encourage amateurs who rarely use Morse code and those who have never used Morse code to get on the air. Code to be sent by hand and received by air at less than 10 words per minute. Saying that, in the last few years, many contacts have been made at only 3 or 4 words per minute. There are bonus points for those amateurs who have been licensed without having set a Morse code examination. There is also a bonus point available for those participants who declared that they had fun. The contest is on 80 metres on Saturday the 18th of May between 0800 hours and 1100 hours UTC and on 40 metres on Sunday the 19th of May between 0300 hours and 0600 hours UTC. 
Full details on the St George Amateur Radio Society's website, sgars.org. I, AAU had your full championship the second full weekend of July, that is 13-14. Start 0 hours UTC Saturday, ends 23-59 hours UTC Sunday. trans Tasman Lee Bend Contest, July 21st. The trans Tasman Contest, always held on the third weekend in July, aims to encourage low band activity between VK and ZL. Only contest bands 160, 80 and 40 metres are allowed with SSB, CW and digital. That is Riddy or PSK. This contest is another official WIA contest and will count towards the Peter Brown Contest Champion Awards. Yoda Contest 2024. The next two sessions of this year's Yoda Contest will be from 10 hours UTC to 21.59 hours UTC on 21 July and 29 December on the five classic bands CW and SSB. Everyone can work everyone. Dick's Window to the World. Global Station Celebrating April 18, World Amateur Radio Day, Canada. ROC official stations will operate across Canada from 0000 hour Zulu to 23.59 hour Zulu, April 18, and there are some 14, and all end with the suffix RAC. Germany. DARC special event call sign DA24WARD is on the air through to the 30th of April. Marking World Amateur Radio Day. See QSA.com for QSL details. Greece. The Radio Amateur Association of Greece will be using the call sign SZ0WARD to mark World Amateur Radio Day. They'll be on the air from April 15 to the 30th, with the big day, of course, being April 18. Still no word on any official Australian support for the event. USA, go West Young Man. The National Trail Amateur Radio Club is participating in a special event to commemorate the death of former US President Abraham Lincoln. Concluding April 15, special event call sign W9L will be in operation on 20 and 40 metres SSB each day of the event. The club is operating from a recreated log cabin at the Lincoln Log Cabin State Historic Site, an 86 Acre History Park located in Illinois. The cabin is where Lincoln's father and stepmother once lived, and Lincoln often visited the site. President Lincoln died on April 15, 1865, one day after being shot by John Wilkes Booth. For VK1 WIA National News in Brighton, Sunny Ingham today, I'm Felix VK4FUQ. Hi all, this is Nathan VK5. OG on behalf of Andrew VK5WX and myself from the Adelaide Digital Linking System. We have added a new link for the Sunday morning broadcast from 8.30am Adelaide time and 1900 hours Adelaide time. You can now listen to the broadcast on Adelaide 10G, YSX and YSF on 69159, also on YSF to 3DMR 89821 or through free DMR on Talk Group 5055. This has been a joint project and has been possible with the help from the team from Oz Free DMR, Aussie, Mike Zero Golf Lima Alpha in the UK, Phil Kern VK5ZY, Nathan VK5OG and Andrew VK5WX. For more information, please visit VK5RDF on QRZ.com. 73s, hope to catch you all on the air. This has been Nathan, VK5OG, on behalf of the Adelaide Digital Linking System. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3GTV. Hello, first up in Worldwide Special Interest Group News this week. It's Summits on the Air, Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and other adventure groups. Parklands and Summits are anything but a wilderness for Sue Southcott, VK5AYL. For her, inspiration grows abundantly under the canopy of trees. The retired computer programmer is the author of a free app in use by iPhone and iPad users all over Australia and New Zealand. They make use of it to view and create spots, alerts and logging for SOTA, POTA, HEMA, WWFF, Shires and Silos on the Air. 
She introduced the app, known as Parks and Peaks, at a meeting of the Wireless Institute of Australia in 2017. Creating it did not come easy at the time for Sue, who was still employed as a PC programmer and whose knowledge of Apple devices only included a few basics about their programming language, known as Swift. So she did her homework on nights and weekends to learn it, with an eye toward filling in the need for a complimentary app already available to Android users. She's currently working on version 4 and at some point would like to release an international version. Best of all, Sue isn't just a programmer, she's an activator who gets to field test her own creation. One of her last activations was near the Pinnacles, spectacular limestone structures on VK6's Coral Coast. Needless to say, both the app and the activation were a success. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Digital. Canadian radio amateur Peter Fairley has been experimenting with Meshtastic, an open-source decentralised mesh communications network platform, in order to improve reception by building and deploying a high-altitude relay station. I've got to tell you, Mesh Tactics have been actually pretty incredible, Peter says of his initial experimentation with the platform, using just a roof-mounted omnidirectional antenna. You won't believe all the people I'm getting right now. I even got a guy that was about 70 kilometres away. That's a decent long-range reception, but Peter was looking for more and set about turning two Haltech LoRa 32 V3 boards into a relay station. The idea here is to set two of these up on my tall tower, he explains. One is going to point downwards towards Toronto, and the other one is going to point the other way. These two radios will mesh with the current radio, relaying between two very distant stations. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier, AMSAT's AO109, also known as FOX1E, has recently achieved a remarkable milestone. Launched in January 2021, this satellite operates with an 8 milliwatt signal best suited for CW and FT4 communications among amateur radio enthusiasts. Recent telemetry data from the Dwingaloo Radio Telescope in the Netherlands has revealed an impressive feat. AO109 has set a new record for processor uptime. This information was gathered by Alan Biddle, WA4SCA, who has meticulously monitored telemetry reports on a daily basis and calculated the duration of each reset, allowing for precise correlation of telemetry frames with UTC time. The FOX satellites are designed to undergo onboard computer resets triggered by factors like radiation exposure and low battery voltage. Time on these satellites is measured by counting resets, plus the duration since the last reset. It's common for the FOX satellites to reset every few days or weeks, especially when passing over the South Atlantic anomaly. However, the processor on AO109 has been running continuously since September 2023, accumulating over 18 million seconds of uptime, far surpassing any other FOX satellite. With its anticipated re-entry into Earth's atmosphere in the coming weeks, users are encouraged to make the most of AO109 while it's still operational. Current reports suggest the satellite's altitude is around 300 kilometres, which is lower than the ISS orbiting altitude of 370 to 460 kilometres. Despite facing numerous challenges, including malfunctioning temperature sensors and unused battery cells, Japan's slim moon lander has defied expectations by surviving a second lunar night, despite being in a precarious position with its thrusters pointed upward and solar arrays facing away from the sun. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, received a signal from the lander indicating that it had restarted after hibernating to avoid freezing temperatures on the moon's surface. Initially forced to shut down due to insufficient electricity generation from its solar cells, SLIM has persisted against the odds, reviving itself twice since landing on January 19. Although not designed to endure the moon's harsh conditions, the lander has continued to function, prompting uncertainty about JAXA's future plans for the resilient spacecraft after it successfully achieved its primary mission goal of a precise lunar landing within a 328-foot radius. Worldwide Special Interest Group's IOTA, Baffin Island, IOTA NA047, WE9G stroke VY0. Rick, WE9G is currently active from Koalit Nuvavut, Baffin Island, NA047, as WE9G stroke VY0 until April 16, 
on 80 through to 10 metres, SSB, FT8 and FT4 using a G5RV sloper and you can QSL via LOTW. Pitcairn Island, IOTA OC044, VP6G. This de-expedition was planned for the first couple of weeks in April, ending today, April 14. No de-expedition is safe from Murphy's Law when things always seem to go wrong. But if you thought you were having a bad day, it's worth a listen as we hear the trials and tribulations of Gerben, PG5M, as he set sail, or is that set flight, to Pitcairn. Gerben said in an update on April 1st when he was planning this trip, he built in time buffers just for the worst case. Well, the worst case happened. In Los Angeles, he learned that one of his suitcases was still in Paris. The trackers in the suitcases also showed one still in Charles de Gaulle Airport. What he had in LA was one suitcase with SPE amplifier, DX commander, materials and power supply. The golf bag contained the spider pole for the DX commander, the hex beam and 100 metres of coax. The suitcase that was missing contained all the radios, cabling, power supply, tools, etc., plus personal stuff. When talking with Air France in Los Angeles, they said that the missing suitcase would be on the same flight with him to Papite. On arrival in Papite, the suitcase was not there. So again, Gerben went to Air France and this time was told that it would arrive the next day at 05.30, but his next flight with Air Tahiti to Mangareva would depart at 06.30, so there was a big challenge. Air Tahiti will try and get the suitcase from the Air France flight into their plane. If they don't succeed or Air France arrives late, you'll have to cancel the whole trip. In the meantime, heavy storms surrounded Pitcairn Island and even caused some damage to the chalet Gerben had booked. So there, when working these de-expeditioners, always give some thought and compassion to what they may have gone through to give you a new call, zone, etc. Hopefully everything worked out for Gerben and we'll try to get an update on the outcome. Worldwide special interest groups, radio amateur young timers, Yota, youngsters on the air. With the latest, it's over to Alec, VK2MV. Thanks, Cole. There is so much Yota activity happening in the world, but what about here in VK? Maybe our local clubs don't get into the bragging rights as much as our overseas contacts do. I mentioned the other week I'm heading to Bundaberg for our WIA AGM and convention. While I am there, I'd love to catch up with you and hear about what Yoda STEM activities your club or you yourself are engaged in. So for another great Yoda happening, let's swing the beam to Delaware in the USA. Members of the Nantichoke Amateur Radio Club and the Sussex County Amateur Radio Emergency Service recently attended the 9th Annual STEM Expo at the Delaware Technical Community College in Georgetown. The free event allowed middle and high school students to experience Delaware tech programs through student-designed activities, build connections towards STEM careers, and most importantly have fun. The operators provided hands-on demonstrations using amateur radio equipment. These demos provide valuable insight into radio operations, electronics, and radio frequency mysteries. Students were introduced to 2-meter handheld radios using a repeater, digital voice, and also Flex Maestro control console to provide remote access to a full high-frequency station located in Seaford. Once again, see you in Bundaberg this May. And if I don't see you there, any and all VK Yoda news you have, please send to Steve Kennedy, VK6SJ, who is the WIA Yoda Coordinator, or myself, Alec Cherry, VK2MV Deputy Coordinator. Thanks, Alec, and that wraps up the segment for this week. I'll catch you next week with more. I'm Cole, VK3GTV. OK, to the final final and word in from Kevin, VK2CE, that this year's International Lighthouse and Lightship Weekend is on track for August 17-18 with 125 lighthouses registered so far. But only 11 of those are from VK amateurs and in every state. An unusual entry from a YL VK2 BRA is Shark Island. Shark Island's in Sydney Harbour. And other regulars of VK7 LH at Low Head Lighthouse, Tasmania, VKC LL at Cape Lewin, and VK3 ILH Cape Nelson. Kevin is expecting somewhere between 400 and 500 entries this year. And I'm Graham VK4BB, expecting you to join us again next week here for the WIA National News Service. Until then, walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. 
This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.